the Heisman Trophy odds right now, with a group of five running back, with the overwhelming best odds, feels so 2007-y. 2007-y. Uh, yeah, and I don't know what's more stunning. Group of five, running back, like Heisman favorite, all of these things together. Ashton Genty is a mm -hmm. delight. And let me make it clear, we are having a pro Ashton Genty conversation. This is not about Ashton totally. Genty. Ashton Genty is basically Derrick Henry to college football. It's insane to watch. It's insane to watch how fast he is. It's incredible to watch players make a business decision when they decide just not to try and tackle him. It's also incredible to watch players trying to tackle him and then taking angles that turn out to be very poor because they haven't anticipated how fast he is while he's also a human bowling ball. So, like, Ashton Genty is incredible. This is not about Ashton Genty. But he's a running back, which is a devalued position in college football and football in general. He plays for Boise State, who right now, yes, is the number 15 in the team in the country. But let's not get it twisted. They're not going to get the street cred that Georgia and Alabama get. He's not a quarterback. Like, you look at all of these different things that we associate with the Heisman. Ashton Genty is none of those things. And he's still the odds-on favorite. Like, that's the stunning thing to me. And I think it speaks to the fact that we're still waiting for a team to come out and give us the clear-cut, easy answer. If Texas had done everything they'd done this year with Quinn Ewers, I believe Quinn Ewers would probably be the favorite. But the fact is, the success of Arch Manning makes it easy to say, hey, this isn't about a quarterback, so now you eliminate them. Now, all of a sudden, if the argument is the best quarterback on the best team, that's going to be hard to find. It really becomes Ashton Genty versus Travis Hunter for me, who currently sits at 8-1 to one odds. I mean, that, Travis Hunter, Ashton Genty, non-quarterbacks, I think two have to be two of the biggest favorites. I'm so sick and tired of this being a quarterback on the best team award. And look, sometimes that's warranted and sometimes that's fair. Sometimes the quarterback on the best team in the country deserves to be the Heisman Trophy winner because that guy is the best player in the country. But I, I, I've gotten sick and tired of these unwritten rules of the Heisman Trophy. I view it Facts. as basically the, the MVP of college football who has played a, a bigger role for their respective team than any other player for any other team in the country. Who is doing something that no one else in college football can do or has done? That was a big conversation last season with Jaden Daniels. LSU had three losses. Would that disqualify Jaden Daniels from winning the Heisman Trophy? And I thought, are you people crazy? LSU would have a losing record if it wasn't for Jaden Daniels doing Superman kind of things. In 2022, we had what I thought were the two best quarterbacks in all of college football without an invitation to New York City. It was Bryce Young and Hendon Hooker because both of their teams had two losses. I think that's unfair. And that is no disrespect to Caleb Williams who won it and all of the guys that ended up in New York. Absolutely fair and absolutely warranted and justified. I just don't like that it's now become a you have to win a certain number of games kind of a war. I do understand the argument of wins are a quarterback stat. But I, I, I more so lean toward are you doing something unheard of? Are you doing something at Boise State that makes the entire country pay attention to Boise State? Because I think that's pretty darn impressive. I think your point about Travis Hunter is very well taken because – He's doing something that nobody in college football has done or can do. He doesn't just play both sides. He plays both sides at an incredibly high level and could be drafted at either corner or wide receiver and play either position in the NFL. I also had to give credit to Dylan Gabriel. I think Saturday night against Ohio State was his Heisman moment. And we have not been easy on Dylan Gabriel on this podcast. We have not been easy on Oregon because we've always asked Oregon, okay, pull away from the teams that you should beat. Stop playing with your food. When your foot's on the throat, clamp down. We wanted to see more from Dylan Gabriel and this Oregon team. We saw Dylan Gabriel against the number two team in the country play the best game I don't want to say of his career, but I'll say with certainty, the best game in an Oregon uniform. And that, and on a national stage, a game in which everyone in America is watching, uh, Dylan Gabriel's Heisman odds has skyrocketed, and I think that's, that's justified. Well, when we did our preseason predictions for Yahoo, uh, I predicted Oregon to win the national championship. And when we were asked our Yahoo uh, Heisman pick, I picked Dylan Gabriel. And my logic was simple. I think Oregon's going to win the national championship, which means Dale, Dylan Gabriel is going to have to play lights out. That's just the way it works. 
I stand by that logic, like the old, you know, high school thing where you had to show your math. I stand by the math. That being said, if I had a Heisman vote today, it would not be for Dylan Gabriel. My vote would be run in and sprinted it with Travis Hunter written in huge block letters on the card because I don't think wins and losses are a quarterback stat. I don't think wins and losses are a wide receiver stat. I don't think wins and losses are an individual stat. There are 53 active players in an NFL roster. We do the same thing every time. We're like, well, this quarterback won this game or lost this game. I hate it. You're talking about 100 scholarship kids that are all working their ass off trying to get the, a win on the field, and we want to make it about one player. I refuse to do that. To me, what I'm asking myself is quite simply this. Who was the one, oh my God, can't miss, impacted games, but also just did things that had you shaking in your boots all week player? Who's the guy yeah. that you spent all week saying, I don't know if we can win this game because we have to take on Ashton Genty. That's a fair answer. We have to take on Dylan Gabriel. It is a fair answer because he's the quarterback, but there are other weapons there. To me, Ashton Genty and Travis Hunter stand out because they are what I associate the fear factor, the game wreckers for their respective teams. And for Travis Hunter to be a game wrecker on two sides of the ball, for him to not be the Heisman favorite shows the absolute stupidity and irrelevance of the Heisman. Like, I don't, I don't want to get us in trouble with the Heisman committee. I don't want anybody to get mad at this. But let's be honest. If your award was worth anything, then it would clearly go to the best player. And when the best player right now is not not only the best in his position on the offensive side of the ball, but he's arguably the best in his in his position on the defensive side of the ball. If he's not a front runner for the best player in college football competition, then the best player in college football competition is faulted. It it just becomes the best quarterback in college and football that's competition. That's stupid. They're being have have a different award. Well, there are different awards for the best quarterback in college football. Yet the Heisman still just kind of trends toward that way as well. And uh, in a Colorado game the other day, ESPN put up the uh, uh, the graphics, the little lower thirds for impact players, offense and defense. Impact player for Colorado offensively, Travis Hunter. Uh, impact player for Colorado defensively, Travis Hunter. Like this guy is just, he's a freak. And to be fair, this is not a quarterback hate take. We love our quarterbacks. Whenever we have an opportunity to vote for a non-quarterback in an award like this, I'll take it because it doesn't come around very often. The uh, the first day, of pre- I learned this from our, our good buddy, Harry Douglas, who played for Louisville, Ring of Honor there, Hall of Famer for Louisville, played years in the NFL. And Harry told me that the first day of installation at the college and NFL level, when they went in, to their meetings the first day, the first thing that they spent any time practicing or working on in film room was great game records. So day one was the installation of how do we get around their game records, right? And if you don't have any game records, the whole week preparation is different because now you don't have to worry about that. What's alarming to me every single Saturday is all I can think about is when they go into their practice, when they get their first group of film on Monday, when they get everything that they're going to start digesting for the week, the offensive side of the ball, the offensive coordinator is going to come in and say, who's our game record? And the answer is going to be Travis Hunter. We got to get around this corner. Do not let this corner get involved in the game. At the same day, at the same time, the same conversation from the defensive coordinator is going to be, who's the game record that we can't let beat us? And the answer is going to be Travis Hunter at wide receiver. To have the guy that both sides of the ball are changing their practices around to try and stop, that's Heisman worthy. Very well said. Very well said. The Heisman is supposed to go to the best and most impactful player in all of college football. I don't know how you can say that Travis Hunter doesn't fall into that category. Am I going to say that he's going to win the Heisman Trophy today? No. But he's putting up Heisman-like stats. This is what this award was made for. 